Hi there, and welcome to Treasure It. My name is Sarah, and today I'll be walking you through some of my favorite ways to use Treasure It by showcasing some of its core features to you. Before we get started, you should know that this video will focus on features for the end users, but don't worry, we have another video specifically designed for admins as well. For this demo, I'll be using a Windows laptop to access Trezor It, but it's also available for Mac and Linux, and easily accessible from a web browser, as well as iOS and Android. So let's get started! Trezor It provides a secure workplace with the highest level of security thanks to our patented end-to-end -end encryption technology. To kick things off, I put in my credentials, and then comes the two-step verification, which adds an extra layer of security to the account. This is required for everybody in our company. I tick Remember Me so that I don't have to enter my password every time I sign in. OK, now I can access the encrypted storage. It looks like your usual file manager, but everything is protected by Trezorit. For example, the listed folders might look completely different for a colleague of mine, since I may have access to other folders. At the moment, I'm working on a financial audit. Now, I've come to the point when I'd like to invite some of my colleagues to collaborate on it. In this case, I can create a new folder. I can upload an existing folder or even entire folder structures from my device to the cloud. Here's everything our team needs for the financial audit. I select this folder to sync it to the cloud. From now on, whatever changes I make in the cloud will be changed on my device and the other way around too. Now I'll be using this folder for this audit very often. I'll add it to my favorites so that it's easy to find. By the way, additional files can be uploaded to this folder by clicking on the Upload button or by dragging and dropping any file from the computer. When I need to find a file, I can just look for it with the help of the search bar. Since the files are encrypted, Trezor It only searches in the file names, not in the contents of my files. Each folder is a separate entity from others. Only those specifically granted access to a folder can see its contents. Now, I'm going to invite the colleagues I want to work with on this audit by adding them as members. This method of invitation works with people who have a Trezor It subscription. By setting access rights, I can make sure people will only be able to do what they're required to do, but nothing else. Here, I can set access to manager, editor, and viewer. If you like to follow what's happening with your project, you'll like this feature. I can see the recent activity of other users under the Recents tab. Here, I can filter out one specific folder and I can follow others' activities such as file creation, editing, deletion, renaming, and more. Going back to the folder now. Here I can see the history of file versions and recover previous versions if needed. This may never happen to you, but the restore function does come in handy when somebody deletes something or edits the wrong file by accident. I can restore it easily and continue working on it. I need to work on a document that someone from my team also will need to work on. To avoid creating a conflict file, I'll just mark this file as editing so my team members know I'm working on it right now. Let's say our team is ready with preparing files for the audit. At this point, I involve our external accountant who doesn't have a Trezor It subscription. This is when I use shared links. With shared links, I can share files, folders, or even folder structures with anyone in an end-to-end -end encrypted fashion. I use it to replace risky email attachments because this way I can keep control over my documents even after sharing them. On top of that, Trezor It provides some really cool tricks here to supercharge your security. Since I know we need to submit documents for the audit at a certain date, I set up an expiration date to make sure nobody will be able to access them after that time. I set an open limit as well, which comes in handy when the file shouldn't go from one hand to another. For now, I will set it to 1. For maximum security, I add a password as well. 
I would strongly advise sending the password via a separate communication channel than the link. So if you share the link via email, you should share the password via a phone call or chat. For extra sensitive files, I can also add a watermark with viewers' email addresses or a custom text or disable downloading or printing files entirely. Since the audit files are highly confidential, they should be only accessible to my team and our external accountant. I add the accountant's email address and our company's email domain to the list of allowed users. This way, no one else can access these files for sure. Links can be tracked with the access logs, where I can see who opened the links and when. I'll talk about that in more detail a little bit later. I can also require that recipients provide their email address so I'll know exactly who downloaded the files. Great! Here's one more thing I should mention about links. I can create links directly from my Outlook app as well, which is useful. I can send any file straight from my computer. The Trezorit for Outlook add-in is also available. And if I want to use my Gmail address, there's the Trezorit for Gmail extension. What I love about the shared link is that I can keep control over shared files. I can see the downloads via the access logs. This means I can see who opened the shared files along with the open date, the visitor's email, their IP address, the platform they used, and whether they saved or viewed the file. Sometimes it's useful to know which part of a document the visitor viewed and for how long. In these cases, I check the Log Page View Data box after enabling detailed access logs. This way, I can see how much time the link recipient spent viewing each page. Have you ever sent a file to the wrong person? Trezorit's product team knows it can happen to anyone, so they made a feature to revoke links with just a click if necessary. This makes the download page immediately inaccessible. For this audit, I'll need some documents and spreadsheets from our external accountant, as well as the auditors. To make sure the files remain safe, I'll simply create a file request. This way, anyone I share the file request link with will be able to upload their files straight to our company's Trezorit storage, and my team won't have to worry about the security of these highly confidential documents. Once the audit is done, I want to make sure the files will stay as secure as possible. I move the final files to a folder, which is available only in the cloud. Thanks to Trezor at Drive, I can open and edit cloud files without downloading them. It means files stay protected the whole time, and I can work strictly in the cloud. Here's another nice touch. I can access cloud files directly from my Windows or Mac file explorer. It saves me a tremendous amount of space on my hard drive. Sometimes the folders I work with contain a lot of documents. I want to save as much space on my hard drive as possible, but in some cases, I need some of these files directly on my computer, so I enable Selective Sync. This way, the needed documents are always up to date and accessible on my hard drive, while the rest of the folder is stored only in the cloud. Before we conclude, let's talk a tiny bit about the settings. I can change the language right here in my Trezorit for Windows app, but there are more detailed settings available in my profile page in the web access. Whenever I need some help using Trezorit, I can quickly go to the knowledge base where I can find many useful articles on how to use the software. I can always reach out to Trezorit support team at support at Trezorit.com. I like to be in the loop, so I also follow Trezorit on LinkedIn and Twitter. So those were the most important features of Trezorit. We have another video about the Admin Center where you can learn more about user management, policies, reports, and how to further improve control over company data. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.